think the worst is over. There are a couple of sequels left, but they're not completely objectionable, comparatively speaking. I've had my sprouts, now it's time for dessert. Lots and lots of Pixar. Like Finding Nemo, I could praise the hell out of this movie for hours, but I'll try my best to keep it brief. Firstly, the juxtaposition of the superpowers and stereotypical suburban American life is just excellent. The strength of the provider, the uncontrollable hyperactive energy of the sun, and the two we'll be looking at, Elastigirl, who uses her physical flexibility to try and keep her family balanced, and it's still barely enough, and Violet, the teenage girl who is literally invisible and literally throws up barriers. Mrs. Incredible, aka Elastic Girl, aka Helen Parr, is one of those rare, well-written mothers. The downside is that, outside of being a mother and a wife, there's just not that much to her. Mr. Incredible has his midlife crisis, Dash has his need to compete, and we'll get to Violet later on, but she has her struggles as well. I guess Elastic Girl's something extra is that she's craving a normal life, but isn't that what every movie mother wants? It's just not very ambitious. Where she shines, though, is in the detail. The elastic power fits well, both as a metaphor for a mother needing to be everywhere and do everything at once, and as something visually and comedically interesting. And notice how after having three kids, her hips got bigger. That's the animators not only acknowledging her age and history, but also acknowledging that elastic perishes. That's fucking genius. And while she does succumb to movie mother cliches, this being somewhat of a parody, they're at least done creatively. As I said, Violet has her own struggles. Again, a little cliched, but creatively done. She's a teenage girl who has a crush on a boy and is held back by her own lack of self-confidence. In any other movie, she'd overcome both of these by kicking ass at some end of school sport, music or dance event. But here, her self-confidence comes from realizing her place within her family, learning that she can protect not only herself, but others with her powers, which are much stronger than she thinks and can become stronger still by connecting with the people around her. The familial bonds in this film are strong, with powerful and, above all, believable relationships. I feel for every one of these characters, even the ones beyond the family, even the villains. The world is well built, the emotions feel genuine, this is all starting to sound very familiar. I'm sure I used almost these exact descriptions for another Disney movie not too long ago. Lilo and Stitch 2 is one of the better sequels. It benefits from having writers who clearly respect the original material, the way the writers of Hunchback 2 didn't. A lot of the themes and motifs, such as the importance of family and Lilo's Elvis fangirlism, are revisited but not retrodden. The story is… okay. Again, like the original, the subplot with Lilo is better than the main plot with Stitch, and I wish that had got more attention. She's trying to create a hula dance for a competition that will live up to her mother's who won it when she was Lilo's age. Had it had more effort put into it, the emotion of that journey could have been felt more strongly throughout, rather than bookending the movie. That said, the emotions do feel genuine, which is more than I've come to expect from Disney sequels, so I can't complain too much. Lilo herself has significantly calmed down since the first movie, but it's still enjoyable to watch her enthusiasm and determination about the hula and returning Stitch to normal. And she still has temperamental violent tendencies, she's just starting to realise that it won't get her what she wants. The continuation of Lilo's maturity was not only a brave choice for a sequel, but one that was actually done quite well. It's not perfect, but I have to admire its ambition. Nani has a lot less to do without the stress of the social worker, but I have to say, it is satisfying to see her more settled after working so hard to keep her life together. However, I also like that some of the stuff that was supposedly resolved at the end of the original film has reverted back here. Yes, Lilo and Nani overcame the odds and seemed tight, but realistically, they would still be in an awkward transitional phase that leads to feeling a bit lost and bewildered when things get bad. And they'll always be sisters, which means fighting is inevitable anyway. The real letdown is her relationship with David. The end credits of the original apply that they became a couple, but here they seem to be struggling to date. His and Bleakley's attempts to make her jealous are pretty funny, but if the Lilo and Stitch writers are good at anything, it's creating endearing relationships and I would much rather have seen their attempts at rebuilding a family than this petty back and forth. Lilo and Stitch 2 is, essentially, a watered-down version of the original. The characters, the emotional arc, the story, the animation, the comedy, it's all just slightly weaker. But given how strong I thought the original was, I don't mean that as much of a criticism. 
Join me next time for some more surprisingly good efforts from Cinderella 3 and Enchanted. <laughs>